when you first start up AutoCAD, you get this kind of menu, and then most of the stuff is grayed out. It's just asking you to open what file you want to open. Um, if you had just closed something, it will pop up here. These are like your recent ones. Um, you can also find that under here if you go under there. If you just want to start drawing a blank file, just click here, start drawing. And then this will give you like a blank document. So you'll notice if you use the scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out. And then if you click the wheel in, it becomes the pan tool. And then anything we need um, at the top, you have the ribbon. So this, as you start cycling through it, there's tons of different options that you can go through. And just like we were looking at uh, before, um, you have, depending what it is you're trying to do, some of these will change. Um, so right now, if you go to the home, this is where you find all like your drawing tools and like your layers um, and like the properties of the different layers. Then there's like all of these guys. Um, if you go under insert, they've combined all of these this thing at the top is called the ribbon so all of these tools are grouped together in a way that makes sense but based off of their like task so if you're trying to add notes or measure something you'll probably find that under annotate and you'll recognize some of these terms once we get into Revit because you'll realize that they're exactly the same and so that's kind of where it helps to understand a little bit about how this stuff is organized because it's not the same in every software but there's some sort of underlying understanding that like anything that's related to adjusting your views will probably be under your view tab manage if you've started like um, importing different things or if you want to change kind of like some of like your main settings um, that's where you could do it um, what you're outputting when you print and stuff like that um, if you have plugins, A360 is pretty cool. We'll be using that today. So has anyone used this before? No? So if you look, yours up here should say sign in, in the Autodesk 360. And where mine says my name, I've already signed in. But if you, if you haven't signed in, you can make a free account with like your email. And then that is how we're going to be getting the map for our background since we're doing the site plan. Um, with the, um, URL? Yeah, just whatever email you use to like get your AutoCAD. You just sign in, you make a free account, and then um, it should let you get in there. Um, so now what I have is um, just empty space. If I wanted to draw anything, you have all of these tools. So there's different ways you can grab things to do. You can do it all through clicking. Like visually, like if I see a polyline, I can click that, and I can click here, and I can click there, and then you can hit enter. Or you can type it in, so you can start typing polyline, or P line as a shortcut, and hit enter, and then you can do it that way. Um, once you've done a command, you can repeat it by just hitting enter again. It will bring up whatever your last command was so that's a really easy way to kind of repeat things quickly if you're trying to do like a line and you're doing another line another line it helps you kind of get there quick um, you can also there's three different ways just right off the top of my head that you can do enter so enter using the enter key will work or you can use the space bar that also works the same as the enter key so if you're ever trying to finish a command or repeat something spacebar will also do the same exact thing which is nice because usually your right hand is on your mouse and your left hands on the keyboard so the spacebar is right there so I find myself that's my favorite one is just hitting the spacebar with my left thumb um, the other way is if you right click you can tell it repeat the last command or you can see your recent inputs um, there's also more um, items uh, you can set it, I think if you hold it down, there's like a way to change the like, sensitivity of the right click, like how quickly you have to do it. Um, by default, you just right click and it gives you all this stuff. Um, another important thing to do usually right when you start a file is make sure that your units are correct. 
because um, you don't know if what you're drawing is in inches or feet or miles when you type in one like how big is that so if you just type in units or start typing in units um, and then hit enter it will bring up your drawing units and you can see right now I'm in decimal so I want to change that to architectural and then the precision this is how precise AutoCAD will be calling like your di your dimensions so if you put this like 1 256 tolerance when you draw a dimension line it's gonna be like exactly on there which means you'll get all sorts of weird decimals because it's not gonna be exact whereas if you put the precision down to like half inch let's say you had like two inches and three quarters it's gonna either round that up or round it down it's just gonna show you a clean number so if you're doing something based off like an existing drawing or something like that where it's not perfectly square or the building's not 20 feet it's like 20 feet one and three quarters something weird like that you can adjust the tolerance based off of that so it just depends really like how precise you need it to be some people like going to 1 16th I tend to just use it quarter or half inch just depends like what level of detail you're drawing at uh, for now this is a site plan so we don't need to go crazy you can just do half inch um, insertion scale this is if you like import anything and you put it in like what unit do you want that to be in so inches is good um, and then angle this is for when you're rotating things or you're measuring at an angle like right now I'll leave that there because degrees is good and then you can hit OK so now if I type in like polyline or click this guy and then it asks you for your starting point it also says it down here in the command line so this is kind of your go-to you look there you click and then you go over and you have sort of the dimension that you want you can also type in if I wanted 20 feet 20 and then the feet and you hit enter if you want to lock it kind of to a direction like 90 degrees you can use what's called the ortho lock which is down here that's like a little perpendicular right angle now it will only let you draw in 90 degrees if you don't want that you can turn it off or you can hit the F8 key that's the shortcut so let me turn this guy on Oops. I think that's probably a good spot for it. Okay. So that just shows you what I press as soon as I press it. Because sometimes I'll use a shortcut and I forget to say it every single time that way you can see so um, another thing to notice is when you have so let's say like I start drawing circles you can copy by typing in copy and then it'll ask you where do you want to start where do you want to go we can do stuff like this so I'm just drawing random right now um, if you click and let go and then you move your mouse to the right notice how it creates a solid selection window and it lights up blue if you go the other way notice it's dashed and it's green that's actually really important a lot of people don't realize what you can do with that but it's super helpful because if I wanted to grab all the trees but not the square and I try and just pick every single one it's gonna take a long time whereas I could just do this and see that grabbed everything that it touched even if it wasn't fully within that box whereas if you go from right to left with the solid blue side see the items only highlight once they're fully within the box so that big square thing we have in the back it's not going to select it because it fell outside of that rectangle at some point if I go the other way it doesn't matter if you barely touch it or not it will grab anything that touches this green area so see there it's going to grab the top three guys so depending how you want to select something you can use that trick so that will help you a lot as you're working so like those little tips 
or what ends up saving you like hours of time because each time you do it, it saves you like uh, 30 seconds and you do it probably 500 times every time you're doing a drawing so what I found is the people who work the fastest are the ones that are the most efficient when it comes to like selecting things or organizing their layers or the steps that you can easily avoid repeating endlessly if you just take a second to think about how you're working that's where it really will help you um, so right now we have this guy but he's just kinda out in space right so let's start trying to bring in our map so that we can just start tracing it now typically on a real project you wouldn't just trace randomly and then say that's your site you would always have like a real survey or something like that but sometimes early on in the project you don't have any of that you just have like you know, an aerial that shows where the site is and you might have like the property boundary but outside of that you might not have anything so this technique I'm going to show you is actually really useful for like building the context around your site immediately to your site I would always recommend using like the civil like if they did a survey of that property or they have the actual um, like survey whether it has like topo or the property line or the, the actual uh, plat for that um, property because that will always be more accurate but this will get you pretty close I mean you're not going to be able to build anything off of this but if all you're using it for is context or to see kind of how your site relates to a larger area this is really useful um, so the first step is you you make sure you're signed in to your Autodesk A360 um, and then that allows you to go to insert and then from here you click this guy set location and once you click that you can say from map oh, here. okay so this is what's supposed to pop up for some reason it took forever so I'm gonna search Lake Louisa and then it found it so I'm gonna tell it drop marker here and then hit next Hopefully this one works. Okay, good. So here it gives you a ton of different types of GIS coordinate systems. I typically just pick whichever one is at the top that says foot. So, I mean, you could try any different one you want. These are just different sort of references. Um, and then you hit next. Now it's going to say that reference point that we just clicked, where do you want it to go in your AutoCAD file? So that's just like a pin that drops right in the center of that lake. So I'm just going to tell it, Zero, 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 which is the origin point. So if you wanted to put a different point, you could type it in like 10, 100, 1000. Um, but since I just want zero, 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 and that's the default option there, I'm just going to let it take that one. Um, and then the next thing it asks is which direction do you want north to be? So if you don't change it, 90 means just straight up. So that's okay for us too. So I'm going to hit enter there. And then it's placed that there. And then if I zoom out now, you can see it's going to have like the whole map in here. So all you're seeing now is the lake. But if I keep zooming out, it has the whole map in there. And the nice thing with this is it's actually to scale. So if you start drawing on it, it's actually going to be accurate. It's not. It's not going to be down to like the inch, but you'll at least be able to turn the map off and then use that to kind of help guide you in there. Yeah, there's like a little Mickey forest. Um, but what I would do is look at this and start off at something like this distance and then use, well, maybe not this far, but what you can do with this is change it from map aerial you can go to map road so it's not so detailed and then this just shows you kind of like major things so here what I would recommend is for your area map where you're showing kind of where the site exists so remember we have two maps on the cover one is like the global scale and the next one is zooms in on the site to show you within the site where we're going to be so like here, we've only got the one. Where is that? This one. Oh, this one kind of has it. But see, that shows you 
like major highway so there's like i4 going by there and then just shows like where the building is so it's just something that's really like a line drawing this one just has like a map that just shows you kind of like where the site exists within like the larger context um so here what you want to do is you can either use map you can use map hybrid or if you don't want to use this you can just turn it off but here um, what I would recommend is start with a polyline and then just try tracing my mouse is like freaking out maybe this way is better I'm okay so I would just go along this and then I don't want my object snap on there you can just kind of click along and get something in here for now Along the roads? so yeah so what I would do is first start off with kind of the major road that would help orient somebody so if that's I4 or in this case the turnpike and then down there you have the expressway um, here's colonial and then you use those to kind of help orient someone as to kind of where you are so like if I told you it's at, uh, it's at near downtown Orlando or something like that, then you would want to at least see kind of where that is in relation. So here, once I select that line, you can see here like it's lighting up and it's telling us it's on layer zero. So one thing I would recommend is manage your layers really well. So if I turn this off, let's, let's draw this one in first. I'm going to put this guy in like that. And notice I'm going like really quick with this because it's well my mouse keeps glitching out on me but as I'm coming down oops so you've got this guy Let's just say it's something like that. And then that's colonial here. So this one is pretty straight. So we can click there to here. Yep. It's not even curved or anything. I'm just drawing straight lines. Because the scale that you'll see this at it's going to be really far away so don't try and get like all the way down to like how many like lanes you have in this road or anything I'm just trying to draw a line down the center of the road because you'll see once I get to like the actual sheet this is going to be pretty small And this is the road where this is actually on. You're supposed to do that by the next one? Mm hmm If I get stuck, are there any good like YouTube tutorials or something? Yeah, I'm gonna post this one too. Oh. I'm recording it right now. Oh yeah. Thank yep. You. Are you teaching any other mine? Not this semester, it's just this class. But if you have questions, you can always just email me, and then if it's something simple, I can do that. And I have a lot of other AutoCAD videos. Well, not a lot, but a few of them. So um, I can always help you that way, too. There's something there. And so let's say you wanted here to highlight this lake or something like that. We can then draw here. It doesn't have to be crazy. So um, now let's see. Let's turn off 
that map. So if we go insert, actually now it's geolocate, and under map we can just turn it off. So you can see here you have some roads, some stuff that goes across. Obviously I would add more if I needed to add more detail. And then that's kind of your overall map. This would have the labels and everything it would need. What I would recommend is create layers. So right now we just have a layer zero. So everything exists on layer zero. Once you highlight something, it will show you here what layer it's on. So right now it's on layer zero. So if you click here, layer properties, this shows you how to make and organize all your layers. The other shortcut to get to it is if you type that in. You can type in, start typing in layer. And then once you type in LA, it'll offer you that. That brings this up. So even if you're not on the right tab, like you can't find it, you can just type in layer. And then this window will pop up. So up at up here, you see the layer that we have now. And you know you're on that layer because it has this check. That green check means this is the active layer. So any new stuff that you draw, whether it's a line, a circle, anything, it's going to be defaulted to that layer. If you want to make more layers, you have these buttons at the top. So the first one makes a new layer. So if you click that guy, it makes a new one. So let's call this one roads or like major roads. You can call them whatever you want as long as you stay consistent. Um, and then I want to change the color. So right here where it says white, I'm going to do this. Let's just make that it's a road. Let's try purple. Who cares? And then I'm going to close this. So now in order to get one of these on there, you can click that, click here, and then put it there, major road. And then this one was a major road. So we click that. Notice how it says layer zero because that's the active layer. And if I pick this, it changes to major roads because this is on that layer. And then this guy is still on layer zero. And as soon as I click both, watch this zero appear. It's going to go away. See, it doesn't tell you anything now. Because what that, what that tells you is you've selected items that are on more than one layer. So it's not going to show you what layer because there's more than one. So that's an easy way to know that you've got things on different layers. So now we have that. And then we can make a new layer. Let's call this one like secondary roads or whatever. And then this one could be, let's make it green, I guess, or yellow. And then the color of the layer doesn't really matter. That's something that you're seeing here based off of like how you're organizing the file. It doesn't mean you need to print this rainbow file always. It's just showing you that you have different colors for the different layers just to make it easier when you're modeling and drafting. When it prints, you could have these all print black. You could have them print the actual color of the layer. You could have the yellow layer print red if that's what you wanted. Like, But for what we're doing, the most part, you'll just be printing black. So it'll just be monochrome. If you look at most construction drawings, they're always black and white. Um, so we'll get in the habit. I'll show you that today, how to set this up so it will print on a sheet, and then how to actually get it so that you can print it. Um, this guy, I, this is the lake. So I want to put this on a new layer for lakes. So I'm going to go new layer, lakes. And I recommend anything you would want to display differently, create a different layer for it. So if it's a, like, if you think when you print, you would want something to read very dark, like a building. So notice how um, some layers, well, this one's all done by hand, so that's not a good step. But this one, you have, I can try. See how like some of these lines are really dark and some of them are really light. Some of them are really thin, some of them are really fat, some of them have hatches. So depending what it is you're trying to show, use that to help you decide what goes on different layers. 
obviously like walls will go on a layer windows could go on a layer trees like landscape elements that could go on its own layer if you're doing like sidewalks that would be a different layer than roads maybe it just depends how you want to be able to control them once we go to print them because we'll have independent control based off it's not necessarily always the layer but you can set it so that it could print by layer or it could print by what color you assigned so if you say anytime you use the color magenta it should print like really fat line you could do that you can also change the line weight here so right now the line type is continuous so it's just all these lines are solid we could make it so that this line instead of being a solid line it could be so if you go here it just has one but if you go to load we could do dashed and you can say okay and then we could make that one dashed so that instead of showing um, did it do it? yeah so you could say okay and if you notice these guys they should be dashed but they're not but here you can see by layer they should be reading as dashed so if we zoom in and get close oops you'll have to adjust the line weight to see how close I'm having to get to it oh man it keeps disappearing on me but I'll do it from back here oh there you go see the line weight yeah. so instead of showing it as a solid line it's going to do that and then that's just the scale of your line weight so let me adjust that so line LTS line type scale default is set to one and this is something that you can change a lot as you're working sometimes you want like a different scale um, but let's just see if we hit 50 you can read it a little better we could try like 500 and don't worry too much about getting stuff like that perfect because where you need it perfect is in the layout once we go to prop plot it right now we're working what's called model space so AutoCAD has two distinct kind of modes one is called model space the other one is called paper space so think of model space as where you're building the model and drafting all the like the actual like, lines that you're going to be printing so in model space you'll always be working at one to one scale if something should be 20 feet long in model space you draw it 20 feet long so you always just draw it real size once we go to actually print it like you can't print something that's 20 feet long you have to shrink it down at some scale onto a piece of paper does that make sense so that's when you use paper space so think of it that way like I'm gonna model something or I'm gonna print it out on a piece of paper and then that makes it really easy to remember should I be in model space or should I be working in paper space um, that's one. Yeah, the same with the laser cutter, right? Where people want to just do the model and, and the laser cut. It's mm -hmm. the same thing, right? Yeah. There's so a, and yeah, and on the laser cutter, you could just leave it as model space to scale, and then it will work that way. Um, you'd have to scale it down, obviously. But paper space. So if you, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But let me just finish these guys first. So I had this one. Um, let me just put him. You can also do it this way. See, I'm going to click lakes there. And then we have this. So let's say now I have enough where I'm ready to put that on its own sheet. If you look down here at the bottom, you have model space, and then there's two layouts. These are technically the default ones for paper space. Uh, and if you click on them, you'll see it's put this on kind of like a piece of paper for you. Um, but these are just the default ones, so there's no like control over what that was. Um, so I'm going to click New, and we can do um, a new layout, or you can do from a template. Let me just show you how to do a new layout like from scratch. Um, so if you do that, it'll open up like that. So you can right click, and you go to Page Setup Manager. This lets you go in here and edit this so rather than changing all these settings when you go to print you can do this once to the whole paper space layout and you never have to repeat all the printer like setup every single time you plot so if we go to model space and I just type in the word plot or you hit control P for printing or you go file print 
it will always bring you to this menu. So see that? It's saying plot model. It's going to ask you what printer do you want to use, what size paper, what do you want to display, what scale, how do you want it to like assign the colors. If I close that, I print, I come back tomorrow and I hit print again, it's going to ask me all that stuff again. Every single time you print, you guys go through the whole menu. If you're smart and you set up a layout, when you go to page setup manager and you go modify, notice it's the same exact page. Here, we just assign it one time to this layout and you never have to repeat it unless you want to change one of the settings. So think of this as like in any software like Word, uh, PowerPoint, anytime you're going to send to print and you get asked all the stuff about the printer, like do you want it to print sideways, do you want it color, black and white, think of that as this. And rather than changing it every single time you open the software, you assign it just this one time. So rather than print to a printer, I'm going to print to PDF. That's kind of the first thing I usually set because you'll get different options down here based on what you set here. Um, you can also change properties here. Um, then the page size, you can use 11 by 17 or ArcD or whatever size you want to use. Um, you set that here. Um, what do you want it to print out? The layout, which would mean this whole thing. Or you could tell it to play like a window or extents or your entire display. So I'm going to tell it, use my layout. The scale. I don't want to scale my drawing using the print. I want to scale it using the actual layout. So I'm going to tell it leave this at one to one scale for now. And then up here, you have the plot style. So that decides how AutoCAD will read all the lines that you've done and convert those to the printed line. So think of that as you've told AutoCAD where to draw, and then this tells AutoCAD how to draw those lines. So there's all these different ones. See, there's like screening, like the default one, or you can do like grayscale or monochrome. These are like black and white ones. So for now, we can just stick with those. Um, and then all of these other guys, let's just leave them for now. And then I'll show you later how we can modify these, but I at least want you to see one first. So once you're done, you can hit close. And notice we have our page here. So that's an 11 by 17. And then within it, we have this little window. So that's actually showing me what I drew in model space. But it's on the 11 by 17. So if I were to print, that's exactly what would come out. It would be an 11 by 17 with that square down there, that size. So if you wanted this to be to a certain scale, or a different shape or something like that. Let's say we wanted it to look like this one where it's just like a square. You can do that. You can grab this guy. You can type in move. And then we can move this. You grab it from there. We can move it up. We can zoom in. You can grab the edge. So you have to grab the edge in order to be able to modify it. And then you can click that little corner and scoot that in. and you can do that. Um, if I wanted to actually put a scale to that, you can assign a random scale by just like double clicking and that activates it. Notice now it says top 2D wireframe and we got the little cube like we had when we were in model space. Now that's turned this window on and you have to be really careful because if you scroll in here, notice how I'm zooming in and out of my model. So if you set a scale, let's say you put it to like eighth inch scale, and then you're just messing around with your layout, and then you zoom in and out on it all of a sudden on accident, um, you're going to change the scale of that drawing. And you might actually move it off the window. So think of this as a piece of paper, and there's like a little camera floating on top of the lines that you drew. And whatever that camera sees, that's what this little window is. It's like an, like an eyeball looking at your CAD file. So if you told it to sit right here, it's only going to see what's right there. And if you move it over here, it's only going to see what's right there. If you zoom it all the way out so that it can see the whole drawing, it'll show you the whole drawing. So to prove that to you, nothing that I see here is different than what was over here in model space. So if I want to just add a bunch of random circles, 
like this. Oops, help if I clicked it. Let's see, we got like our Mickey thing over there. Um, so now I don't even do anything. I don't save or anything. I just can jump right back to my layout and see those lines are there. Because it's not actually drawing a new drawing, it's just showing you your drawing at whatever size you want at that in this window. So if you click the window and you want an actual scale, not just whatever that is, you can select the edge first of your of your uh, viewport, and then come down here where it has. It's usually like this. It looks like a bunch of random numbers with a little drop down, and if you hover, it will tell you kind of what that's doing. So the first one you do is you click on it and then it gives you a bunch of default scales so let's say I wanted it to be 1 to 100 you could click there and once you do that see it zoomed in so obviously that's too close so I think that's probably the farthest one this is going to be even closer so if you do scale to fit it's going to zoom it way out so what I would say here is maybe we change this and we add a new one. So if you go all the way down, you can do a custom. And we're going to add one. Let's do just for this one, 1 to 1,000. Did they put a scale on that one? No. Sometimes they're not even to a scale. If it's not to a specific scale, you can write the letters NTS on your legend for that drawing, which means not to scale. That, that doesn't mean it's not like accurate like the relationships of each thing what that means is there's not an actual scale that you can use to measure on there so you'd have to make it up somehow but let's do one to one thousand and see how that works so the way you would make a custom one is your paper units always stay as one inch and then your drawing units we were in inches right so if we wanted one inch to equal a thousand feet you would have to multiply 1,000 by what to convert inches into feet? 12. So it would be one paper unit equals 12,000 drawing units. This is only if you want to make your own custom scale. If you were doing 1 to 100, it would be 1 to 12 times 100. Or 1 to 50 is 1 to 12 times 50. So once you have that, let's see what that actually gives us. Where's my 1 to 1,000? It's up here. Nope. Still too close. So it's like really far away. Um, but for now, don't worry about this one. The one that's more important is the zoomed in one. So let's go back. So let's say this is good here. And then I'll show you later. I, I want you guys to make your own little like title block so that you have something that's like consistent across your drawings and you can do that you can use like a default one if you want like let's say like you go new from template and you go I think here there's some uh, imperial yeah so this one like you could use one like this and then just scale it down to fit 11 by 17 if you wanted so see here it's got like title block on the side and you just fill in all the information um, that's one option or if you want you can find one there's tons of them online if you don't want to make one to make one is super easy you just draw the lines and then you just save it and then you just drop it in so if we go back to our model let's zoom in now here on the actual site let's bring back our map so view no, search Manage. Oh no, it's under geolocator. It creates its own tab. And then, your question? No, I mean you can do like um, <clears throat> so. I would recommend at least laying out the paper space, and then like the cover could have a different title block than the other ones, but at least have some consistency once you get into the sheets so that they're all the same. Generally, on the right. I just, yeah, I just, part of the title block, I usually keep a model and import it in. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, some of the stuff that is in paper space, it matches the tab. And so. 
Mm -hmm. You could do that if you want. Just whatever works best for you. Um, what I want to do now is have um, an even smaller one down here that can zoom in on just the specific site rather than like this whole thing like the way this one is. I want to zoom in on a tiny portion. So let's close this one up some here. So that's actually going to make this even smaller. Oh, if you want to add one, there, the only one I saw is this one, but you right click and you say from template, and then it was sheet sets, and then imperial, architectural imperial. imperial yep, yeah, there's just the arg D. Oh, okay. But if you wanted to modify that, that one now, you can go here, page setup manager, modify, and then change all this to be back to, um, like, Adobe PDF, rather than being that size, if you want 11 by 17, you'll have to um, put, let me see, monochrome, you would have to then see how big the title block is, you'd have to scale this down. So I'm using the scale command for reference, I would grab it there to there. If you wanted to do something like that, you could. Because the title block isn't the key thing that needs to be like perfect to scale. It's the actual viewport that you put within it. So if you do that, you can go like we had here on our other one. These should usually be to a scale if you're actually putting a drawing in them. If you want to add another one, you can go to the Layout tab. And then here you have... You, this is another way you can make layouts if you don't want to just right click you can go here new and it will just make a new tab at the bottom so this is under layout um, but if you hit here these are for your viewports so you can do a rectangular one or if you, it was like a weird shape that you didn't want to include the whole drawing you could do a polygon or if you had like an object let's say like you had like a circle for some reason you wanted to do like a circle drawing you could pick it and then it would make that into a viewport. Um, but just a standard rectangular one, you can come over here and then just draw. And once you let go, it will make that a viewport. And then this one, we can activate it and let's zoom it somewhere over here. And then that one can be to, maybe this one could be one to a thousand. And now let's turn on the map. Notice how the map doesn't show up in the other one. If you actually want the map to show up, you have to freeze part of it using the capture area. And I'll show you how to do that, but I don't recommend doing it too much because it's going to be pretty like grainy. I usually use the map to trace, and then I turn the map off. I don't actually use it to print, although some people like doing that. But if you use capture area, if I do capture viewport, it will just grab my viewport, or you can tell it the area you want it to capture. But notice how when I'm this far away, see how it loaded everything? Once I zoom in, notice how it reloads and it gets like sharper. Like as you get in there, it kind of gets a little bit crisper. It won't do that anymore once you zoom, once you capture. It gets locked. So you zoom in, it's all blurry. Back to show you. So here, we could tell it capture this area. Now, as we like zoom in and out, I can turn off the map, and this will stay. But see, it's, it starts getting really blurry. It's not going to update. But if you go now to here, it's this one. See, it actually shows up. And there you can see it too. So that really shows you how it's the same drawing, it's just showing it at two different scales. One one hundred, you can't tell anything. So, for the purposes of this, we can move that guy. Let's 
say like here. Let's say I want to put mine there. And then here in model space, I could come in and then trace. Let's say I want to put my building here. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> All we've been doing is just drawing little squares and stuff on top of the map. So if that's where I actually want it, let me bring the map back on. So if you wanted to trace this line, you could do this. Obviously, since this is going to be a, a larger drawing, you're going to be more zoomed in. On this one, you would probably want to trace both sides of the road or, or the center and then offset it either way and actually do it like nice and curved. Are you in photo Yep. So we can choose any place in the park? Yep. And then you'll have... Yeah, you put the roads, and then once we get here, you'll you'll draw basically like if there's a sidewalk or something coming towards it, you'll have to connect it. And we're going to be working on this the rest of the semester, so this isn't the last time you'll ever touch the site plan or anything like that. Say enter there, and let's say there's another path here. So I'm still only using the same tool that we looked earlier. It's just polyline. I'm just putting it in and around there. Let's say here I wanted to show how this is going to connect to this trail. Oh, where did you get lost? Uh, I can't get back to the select tool from the polyline. <laughs> From polyline? Yeah, I don't want to draw, I just want to like kind of move the map, but it doesn't let me. And oh, move like this? Yes. Yeah, you, do you have a mouse? No, I don't have a mouse. Well, there, that's your first problem. <laughs> you really want a mouse because it has the wheel. So then you'll do that. So don't be... I've had someone that went the whole semester without a mouse, and they had so much trouble and I told them every single class, like, you really need a mouse because it's going to make it a thousand times I have a easier. Mouse at home, but that, for some reason, yeah. yeah, when you're modeling, you'll always want a mouse. You can do it without it if you go to the home. Uh, where is it at? Uh, or I think you, it's H is the shortcut, or is it H? Or? H? No, it's pan. It's P. So then your mouse becomes the hand. And then you move around. If you hit escape, hit escape. So the trick I always do whenever I'm in a command I don't like, just hit the escape key like 10 times. And then that will bring you out of everything. Yeah, it will, it will bring you back to like the main thing. And then you can type in pan. And it should turn into the hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all this will be paper space. That's what I was saying. If you haven't used it, you're gonna be in for like a, a, a rough start, but then you'll start getting the hang of it. Because it's not like a thousand things. They think that this is like some stuff for the GC. Uh, no. I mean, there's a lot of people that still use it. Some people only know AutoCAD. So. Yeah. 
So is that are you do you guys follow this so far? Did it pop up? Yeah, mine did that too. It took like an hour. I think it's something with the um that's awesome. Okay. So here I can take it off again. So if I do remove location, wait, hang on. Let me put something over there first. I think I put it at the origin, but I don't think it actually went there. Oh no, I did. So um, let me remove it, then I'll put it back. So now here's my drawing, and if I want to bring in the map, you go to insert, mm -hmm. and then you're going to come over here to set location, and then from map, and then it should bring you here. Yep. So type in Lake Louisa at the top, and it should give you one here, and you have to click... Yeah, you have to click drop marker here because that will drop it where it's, it's showing you there, that number one. So if you click that. Okay, so I just type Lake Louisa in the banter. Mm -hmm. And then drop marker here. I click there. Yeah. That's probably you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Apple. Apple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that I don't have permission to that, so don't have that. I had the same problem. You have to sign in. Sometimes you have to restart your AutoCAD, um, and then it'll work. I, I had to do mine three or four times before. What, what did you do? I think that's probably the same. Oh, just pick whichever one is in feet. Any of the ones that are in feet. Yep. And then it should bring you into here and ask you for the location point. And you can use zero zero zero. You can just hit enter. And then it wants to know which direction north is in your model. So if you just leave it at 90, it will just put it in. The, the AutoCAD screen or the... Yeah, it should. Because it should ask you... So here, I can start it over again. So did, did everyone get the location? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 Um, but try set set location one. What does it trigger when you say that? That's another problem. So here you search Lake Louisa. Number one. Drop marker, you go next, and then it gives you this whole list. Just pick one that says the units are in feet. You click that, and then you go next. Then it should ask you for a point for the origin. You can leave it at 000, zero, zero. just hit enter, and then it'll ask you for It'll ask you for the north angle. You can just hit enter again. So just hit enter twice. You don't have to type anything. And then it should drop it in. You don't have to. I was just showing you how you could if you needed to. Because for later we will, once we start getting inside the building, 
you'll have like dashed lines for the column grids for stuff that's above you you have a hidden line but for now it can all be one because it's really going to just look like um, the one on our homework the one that's just like a line not on these it's on this one So if you look at this one on the first page right here, that's basically what you're drawing. So that's ultimately what you'll end up with. Something that looks like that, just lines with like little labels that show the roads. And then the next, I'll show you. And then the next one is, oops, here. It's more like this, it's closer in. So it'll have like two lines for the roads. If there's like a path, it really comes off. And then your building will be something like that. It'll say like building site or something. And it'll point to an area where your building is going to go. So that part I'll show you here. You can do by, if you wanted to label these, We can go text here, and then you can just click there, and you could put something like that. Multiline text? Yeah, you can do that. Um, and then what row was this? Let me see. You have to do this. So where it says map aerial, you want to put map hybrid or map road. And then it will put the names on them. Yeah. Under geolocation. And then you have this guy. Yeah, either road or map hybrid. Then it will put the name. So then this one. So. So and then here's so this one's 426 or 429. Does it form directly from the GIS server? Which one? That's the update. So when you capture, you're actually disconnecting it from the GIS server. Right. Mm -hmm. So here. Where's my text? You can do it as a spline, but you'll. I usually end up regretting splines whenever I use them. Because splines will get super weird. Um, so they don't work really nice with other software. Especially Revit, yeah, like hates when you bring them in. Like they'll either disappear or they'll come in all jagged and they'll corrupt everything. So and you could just like, uh, do a radius on it. Yeah, you can. Oh, yeah. Or you could draw arcs and connect them, or you could draw it all straight and then fill it the corners. So, um, for some reason, I can't draw. Let me just do a single line text. There we go. So that's 429. Oops. I have a very basic mouse at home. It's like it's corded. Is it okay? I mean, I, I hate mouse. <laughs> I hate using it. Once you start, <laughs> once you start drafting, you'll really want a mouse. I know. It doesn't matter if it has a cord or not, as long as it has a wheel. Because my Mac mouse was so neat, it was so just design age. It was like yeah. the white ones. Yeah, but that one's terrible for like, I know, modeling. but you know, I just don't like that thing at all. But mm -hmm. I don't have to do it. <laughs> yep. 
And then this is something else. I'm just drawing them. So let's just put turnpike. And then if you want a layer that's for text, that's another good one. So you could have a text layer. Um, typically I leave layer zero as layer zero and I don't look, put anything on it um, just because it's the default you want one layer to be like a default layer so that way it has stuff on it I mean you can you, you don't need a layer zero you can rename that whatever you want it's just a standard layer okay. um, yep so and then this you can grab them on layer text. And let's see how they look here. So there you go. See, so you have something there. And then on this one, let's see if these are annotative. And then this is a leader. So there's different kinds that you can do. Like the standard one is like that. And then what this will do is you click and then does that. Is that going the other way? See my text is disappearing somewhere. being annoying. If you wanted this to read a little bit clearer, there's two ways we could do it. So one is we make a layer for buildings. And we can make this like red. And then if you wanted to change the line weight, you can make that thicker. And then we can drop that guy on there. And notice here it's showing the same because we're not displaying the line type thickness in the model space but when we go here once you I think you can go here page setup
Yeah, it just depends what you're trying to do. If it needs to be perfect, then it probably does need to be. So we can also add a hatch if you go type in hatch. Am I not getting it? Select that guy, and you can make it solid, you can make it like this, and then if you pick one of these hatch patterns up here, you can change properties of it. So, right now it looks like solid, but that's just because our scale is really small. So, as you make this bigger, like sometimes you have to go to like a lot. So, see there, it started to hatch it across, and then if you change the angle, that will change like where its direction is going. Mm -hmm. The transparency, um, whether you want it by layer or how you want it displayed. And then once you hit enter, it will go in there. And then when we get here, it makes it a little bit easier to see. So remember, you're just going to be drawing with black, so you can get more detail by starting to create those kind of elements that will read regardless of what color they, they are. Just by like pattern like the hatches that you're using the thickness of the lines so if I just print this right now let's see what comes out so if you just hit control P just the way it is let's drop it on the desktop so see it came out like that so it's sideways, but that's easy to fix. I never know where they move this. They do it. So notice how thick this looks, and when we zoom in, it's like solid black. So that's something to keep in mind that eventually, remember before we were drawing the line that's going to be like the major roads? And if you come up here and look at them, like it just looks like that. And what, what I can do now is remember those are a different line, a different layer than these roads. Um, we can come back to our AutoCAD and then there's two ways you could do it. You could do it in the model on, under the layer properties or you could do it based off of the color. So we can say major roads should be, let's make it thicker like one. And then secondary roads can be like a point three. And then buildings and the hatch is there, so we can leave that as a default line weight because it's on that layer. And then now let's make that even more than that 800 so it's not so heavy where it turns into a solid line. Because I made this a really fat line, and if you look at the PDF that printed, like it just looks like solid black. When we zoom in, you can kind of tell what it was doing but it's still the lines are so close together and each line is so thick that like they overlap and it becomes just solid black so you have to start playing around with your line weights and stuff to get it to read correctly then we can go back here and hit control P let's just say it's size 2 So now look at these, they read super fat because we made that a thicker line. So something as simple as that is how you change how things start to read. So depending what it is you're trying to get to read um, will be 
like the extent of what it is that you're doing. So one thing that you could do also is show like a little rectangle that says that this one is zoomed in on just that area or something like that. And to do that, you could do that in the model or you could do it in paper space. You can add new lines too. Um, like we could do a rectangle like this. And then here you can draw like a P line. Come on. Yeah. I don't know how clear this will be, but. And then these guys, we could make a new layer and call these, I don't know, like hidden. And then the line type, I don't want this one. I would want like a really light dash, something like that. And then I'm going to pick these guys and drop them on that layer. And see, now they display like that. But if that's not the right amount of dashes, you can type in line type scale again, LTS. And then we can change this to like a 0.5 or you could repeat it to be like a 0.1. And notice how now it looks almost like a solid line. So depending on what it is that you want, you have a lot of control here. So How do we get to this one? This is the um, just our paper space layout that we did earlier. How did you get there? Did you create one already? The paper space or no? So there's a bunch of ways you can do it. So let me see if this will plot the right way, and then I'll go back and show you. So let's just close these. So now we have that guy. And see it's dashed. And I guess I didn't grab those two to add to it. But you can kind of tell that that area there is zoomed in to be this one. And if you wanted to, you can make this line read thicker so that it's a little bit more pronounced. Um, and then here you have these. And obviously you would add more details so that it would make sense. I'd probably move those labels off of that so that you can actually read them. So in the model... we have it saying these I can move it down this one we could rotate oops had that dash line that didn't go on that layer. If you wanted to, you could grab this one off of that and we could put it on the buildings layer. That's going to make it print pretty dark, I think. So now let me print it. Hmm, maybe not. So, 
there you go. So that's one way you could do it. Um, this one obviously would need a little bit more detail. And then the actual site plan, you can zoom in right on here for the next sheet. And then this one will actually have like trees and things like that. So I'm going to make a new one here so that you can see Marina where how to do it. So let's say for my site plan, I decide that's the extents that I want. So I'm going to want to start documenting like all what's here, like at more detail than any of the other sheets. So let's say that's about how far I want to go. So now that I'm here, I can go, let me move this for some reason, it's perfectly there. How do I cancel when I jump here? Just hit escape. And if it's still there, just click on it and just hit delete. So like if I if I drew something wrong on accident and you hit escape and it stays, you just click on it and just hit delete. Mm -hmm. You can always move it too. So let's say here, it's on layer zero right now. If you click that, I can put it here on lakes, and it'll change. And if you don't want it on lakes, you can put it on like another one. So different from that. Mhm. Mm like it, you don't have to delete everything. You can always like modify it mm -hmm. as you're going. So now that we have this at least ready to start adding more detail, we can grab one of these and then make a new one so actually we could use this one the arc D let's just make a new one so you can do new layout if you right click new layout and then here just like we did before you can go right click page setup manager this is where you'll change all of the settings to adjust this layout so you go modify and then make sure it's printing the PDF and then the size you can set here this is just like printing out a, um, a word document or anything like that you just set here I'm gonna put monochrome so it prints black and white and then that's pretty much it so first step is this Adobe PDF and then 11 by 17 and then I set that to monochrome. Everything else I left the way it was. Does that make sense? Uh, you don't have this one? Oh, you mean this one? The template that's yeah. out here? Yes. That one you'll either have to draw or like drop in an existing one that someone's already made. So this is the only one that's in there by default. So typically your office will have a whole range of title blocks that they use depending on like the size of the sheet or like the type of project that you're working on. Like if your firm does like different types of markets, they might have like a hospitality title block and like a healthcare title block or one client might have a specific title block they like using. So uh, depending what that is, like you you rarely have to create your own title block. So I can ask someone else just to kind of share it with me? Yeah, and so what it'll do is once you create the layout, that title block will be there and your main role will be to like fill it out. But since this is like a blank document, there is none, you can choose if you want to make one, you can do that. And it's just like we made this first one. Um, now here what I would do is you can add like a rectangle here. You can then offset it like a um, quarter inch and we can come in and then here you can explode it. So you can look at these and then if you look up online you'll find like a hundred examples of like um, of what they can look like. So some of them are like that, just the bottom corner. Some of them have all on the bottom. Some of them are just like a vertical thing like that. 
Um, it just depends what you want to do. Um, and that will depend mostly on the firm that you're working at and the project. Um, these are all different like ways of doing it. Not that one's right or wrong. It's just as long as it's consistent, that's the main thing. So once you start using one for one project, keep it the same. So that way anyone can look at the legend on the front and know where to go. And then the sheets always match when you look down here so that you can easily go. So here there's different title block for these because these are the structural ones. But oftentimes what you'll see is the consultants will ask for the title block that the architect is using so that they all match. Here the information will be different and they'll say like, like oh this one from an electrical engineer or something like that. But the overall title block is, is similar. Uh, sometimes they don't match at all. Um, but that's just one of those things. So it's up to you if you want to make something like this. And then once you've created it, it's easy to reuse it. You don't have to remake it every time. You can save it as a template. Or let's say I save this drawing. And then um, I, I can show you guys how to do that at the end if you want to make your own. Um, but you're basically then from here, you would just offset. I've never seen that command. Oops, I don't know what that is. Um, you can say from here maybe it's like I don't know five inches and then from here let's do two oops Well, you can choose like however you want to do these, and then for like the little things that I would recommend doing it like this. Like you can offset maybe like a quarter inch, and then you just keep doing them like that. You click once and you pick the direction. Click once, pick the direction. And then you can trim it. So up here you have the different commands that you can use. So trim is this guy. It will let you select an edge and then like let's say you have this condition where a line overlaps. You can tell it like use this as the cutting plane and then crop that guy to this line. Or you can tell it just use everything. So if you just hit enter again it will it will clip any line back to the last line before it. So, so you could do it like that. If I wanted to do it here, you could do it like that. I don't want to do that one though. And then here you could add text and like fill it in and stuff like that. So here, this I probably would stretch this out over here to there. And then we can grab all of this stuff. Remember, if you grab it this way, it will only grab what's totally inside. Here's a really cool trick. You see how I just grabbed all those and moved them down? Anytime you do a command, it will ask you select the objects. So if I want to repeat that, I can hit enter. So it says move. See the first command that it asks for is select objects. It doesn't matter what command you're doing. If you want to select the exact same objects you just did, you can hit the letter P. And that tells AutoCAD to grab the previous selection. And when you hit enter, see it's going to select the same things you just had. And it still lets you pick more, but if that's it, you hit enter. And then now you can click and move it again from there. But if you had like a tricky selection like that where you had to grab a bunch of stuff, and you've already done the work, rather than just repeating it twice in a row, you can do it that way. So that's what I would recommend if you want to make your own. Like the title is usually it's like it's a unique sheet. It's going to be the only one that's like that. But once you get into like the main sheets, um, it's going to be pretty consistently the same. So you typically have something just like that on the side. So you're not going to really need to be reinventing the wheel. So, but last year I think only one person made their own. The rest of the class just found one and they just downloaded it. 
because you can find just search like free AutoCAD template like title blocks and you'll find like a hundred different types then you just put 11 by 17 or if it's not 11 by 17 like the one there you just make the page 11 by 17 and you scale it down just so that it fits um, but most of that stuff it's it's you're not going to be making so many sheets that it's going to become an issue because we'll jump into Revit. And once you're in Revit, it does all of that automatically, which is where Revit really will save you a lot of time because all this stuff that we're doing about paper space and all that and the title block and everything, you'll see in Revit, you'll do it in like five seconds. Um, and then it just does them. You'll do it in five seconds. <laughs> you'll, you'll be able to do it too. Watch, you'll see. So what... The, the main takeaway from this is to understand the concept of drawing and model space and then you put your viewports in the paper space because that's like a piece of paper. So wherever you print, so that sheet should look like that in paper space if you wanted it to print like that. So if you wanted that drawing going across here. So notice how here you can start imagining what the paper space would look like, right? So there'd be the title block on the right. Here's a viewport, another viewport, another viewport, like a really long viewport along the bottom. And then that drawing could be just one drawing. And it's just different little cameras looking at different spots along there. So that's kind of how um, these work once you start laying them out. And the thing that's kind of cool is um, in AutoCAD, you can link across files. So it not the stuff you see here may not necessarily be in this file. It could be coming from a different file. And next week we'll be looking at that as how to start using things that need to be the same across drawings. Rather than drawing them 10 times for 10 drawings, why couldn't you draw it once and then always reference the same thing so that it's consistent? And then if there's a change, you can change that once and then all of a sudden it will carry through all the drawings rather than updating it 10 times. So, um, what else? Let me look at the assignment to make sure there's nothing I'm missing. I closed it. So this is all going to be the same exact thing we just covered, um, like roads, like how do you get into your site, like where do you park, the site boundary, pedestrian trails and walks, and then this one's good, prominent site features. So if there's water or tree cover or clearings, things like that, um, so how could you show that a clearing? It basically, in order to show the clearing, you'd have to show where it's not clear. And then someone would understand that it's clear there. So if I wanted on this sheet, um, we made this an 11 by 17. So I'm going to make this drawing a little bit bigger. So in reality, there's probably a title block on the side. So you will never get like a full size drawing there. But um, oops. So let me activate this viewport. This is where usually you'll mess up a viewport is when this happens. When you zoom in and then you're trying to get outside. And so anywhere you click, you're so close to your paper that you're within that little window. So if you double click trying to get out, you've just activated the viewport. See how like all the stuff popped up? Notice how it changed. So now if I scroll to try and zoom out on my paper, you're not going to zoom out on your paper, you're in the model. So you're going to zoom your window in and you're not going to move at all. 
So if you ever notice that you've activated the viewport, like try hitting escape a bunch of times or telling it, um, like I think you can type paper. Is it paper? Or you can tell it, what's that command? Yeah, you can, but if you're too close, Oops. So you're stuck here forever. Yeah, there you go. You can just back out of it. I just kept hitting Control Z. Um, so here you can move this and I want this one to be a lot closer because I wanted to zoom in on our site so something like that and then we can go back to the model so let's see what scale we are at what can I do 1 to 100 here man that's huge So let's do one to 200. That can't be right, because that's probably a massive building. So what's this thing's area? So if you type in properties, it will tell you stuff. So this thing's area is 36,000 square feet. So we don't need that big. So we could probably delete the hatch draw a rectangle so if you wanted to be precise with how big you made something you can instead of just clicking and dragging and doing a random dimension you can pick the first point and then at the bottom notice it says area dimension or rotation if you type in D for dimensions you can then specify it says what's the length so the length we could say 10 feet and then it wants the width, so we could say 15 feet. And really, that's just how big our little pavilion could be. Well, that's pretty small. That could be like one room. Here we can make that. So, what was that? 10? So, this would do 50. Oh, I did 50 inches. 15, you gotta put the feet sign. And then this way, let's go 40 feet. So then here, here's a cool trick. If you have um, a layer, something with the, the correct properties, and then you drew something new that doesn't have the right properties, so I want to match this object to look exactly the way that it was, you can go up here there's this little um, like paintbrush on the layers. It's called Match Properties. You can also get there by typing MA. Um, you click that, and you select the source. So that's what I want it to look like. And then you paint it onto the other one. And then I don't have to go and do all the stuff. So where that's really helpful is when there's like a ton of them. And you want to like get all these individual little dudes to become like columns or uh, trees or something like that. You can do it that way. Um, here we have like a bunch of trees. So for trees, you could try finding like a block. I think this thing has. Um, there's some default ones. Insert. Oh look, there's title block. Let's see more options. Browse. Ah, I don't know where all that is. Anyway, you can find like a little block of a tree, or you can draw one and then just copy it everywhere. Um, you can also get away with drawing circles for now. So if you wanted to.
there's a lot of them. So one thing you can do is you draw the edge, like where it's the most dense. Another trick I've seen is people use revision clouds. So if we go, I think the rev cloud is here. Yep. So typically when you do a revision, you always have to do this to mark kind of where something is. But here we could use it. Oops. Uh, we can do polygon. So here I can go here to there to there. So just like we were drawing earlier. weird what is it doing got free here yeah, that works I guess Try something like that. And say those are those, and then out here maybe you have individual trees. The trick you'll have to do is somehow uh, shade it so that it looks like that is a different tone than what's on the inside and you could do that a lot of ways we can go into that so what i want you guys to do is to do like a like a first pass at this and do what i'm asking for your assignment because for next week we'll be going into more detail on the building but i'll mark up your drawings that you do this week and then so for the next assignment you'll have to fix all that stuff that like i gave you as like comments and then you do like the new part of the assignment so it's not like it'll be over like whatever you do now if it doesn't look right like it's stuck that way like you'll have time to fix it and keep doing it and then you actually have to do it as part of the assignment um, because at the end of the day you'll end up with a site plan and you'll be able to see the trees you'll see the walk and everything will look like clear so let's see this what does our site plan look like so see here it's got like different size trees like you can see like where you can walk like where the entry of the building is like where there's concrete on the ground where there's like grass and so those kind of things are what help you figure out where you need to be going and a lot of them can be done with simple hatches so if you look at like the hatch pattern so let's say I want to offset this path five feet From there to there and then this one we can do that way maybe this one's 10 feet when you come in here you could hatch this and then you can choose oops, you can choose objects let's say that you wanted this to be something See how I click both? And then it doesn't have to be like a line like this. There's different patterns. So if it was concrete, I could click this one. And then on this one, the scale's too big, so I can bring that way down. Looks like Doritos flying around. So that all just depends on what it is you need it to be. So you could have something like that. That's probably too small. And remember, this is going to be um, a different size than the other one. 
because you're drawing here, we go to the layout. Oh, I need to hit enter to get out of that creation. It won't let you change to paper space if you're like building something. So here, we said 1 to 1,000 was too big. 1 to 100. So now let me zoom out a little. Oh, where's my belt? There. It does seem odd. These are bigger. But we can make our own. Yeah, I think something is wrong. No, I went by 17. So something in there. I don't know if I trust this AutoCAD scale. There you go, 164. So here, see how we had that? You could do something like this, where if you go back to the model space out here, we can enclose this shape with something like that. And then if I zoom in, I can trim this back. And I'm just doing this to show you at the extent of that drawing, you'll never see past this. So if I wanted to put in a hatch here, see it says select objects, or if you go down here, you can pick internal. If you pick internal, I can click here. And since oh, I couldn't figure it out, I showed it for a second. That's why I had overhang that. It's not possible. Let's see if it works now. Oh, maybe I clicked too many times. So then here, you can select your hatch. Let's see, maybe there's like a... Cross. And then now when we go to the layout, like see, you can that starts to read as something different. And then the clearing starts to read like a clearing because now you had something there at least. It doesn't even have to actually be like trees. Like, and then here you could write trees, like tree, like canopy or dense forest or something like that. And then you would, so the point of the site plan is to get you now, we went, initially we were like all the way out in like an airplane looking at the highways. And then you could pick, okay, if I take that highway, I go down this road, I know where the site is. Then we went, okay, once you're at the site, the location of our building is over here and then now you zoom in here and you say okay now in this area you have this path we have this access to it there's like this clearing on the right and then dense canopy on the left so then after that you go into the building itself with four plans and all those drawings and eventually we'll go into just one room or just the detail of just that connection to the ceiling so you're kind of always zooming in and at each time you only draw a certain amount of detail because if we were trying to draw this level of detail when we were at like that street level, like it would never end. So at that point, it was just one line. Because at the end of the day, 
you're just going to see this, right? So if you look at that, now you'll start to see more detail because we're adding more detail to it. But you're not going to be able to read that. Remember, this is an 11 by 17, so it's probably not going to be much bigger than that on my screen right now when you print it out. So even if you put a thousand lines in there, it's just going to print like a black dot because the lines are so close together at that scale. And then here, we could adjust it maybe so that you see more rather than that cut off like that. Um, ultimately, like in a real project, they, they will typically cheap out and just use the Google Maps rather than draw all this. Um, so you can put that in there as the background if you want, like really light, if you want to try and capture it. Like I would say maybe something like this. But you'll see the issue once you zoom in. It's not going to look right. Maybe we do it like this. We say geolocate capture area viewport. So when we go to this one, it's there. When you see there, you kind of see it, but see you're print printing on black. So now your lines get lost. So if we try printing this, let's see. I don't know if it will actually print. I don't remember if that's all you have to do. Because you get to a point where you're trying to draw black on black on black on black and it just you can't read it anymore. So you can kind of tell. You can also see here that hatch at that scale you can't even read it. Um, so you would have to adjust the line type scale at this drawing if you wanted that to include that in there so it didn't read just like solid. But here, that doesn't read bad at all, that revision cloud, if you're trying to just identify something like that. But keep in mind, the more you zoom in, the more detail you'll show. And on the flip side, the more you zoom out, the less you'll actually be able to perceive. You see, it starts reading just black. And then here, like even that whole thing just looks like one little box, even though our entire drawing lives within there on the next sheet. So that's one of those things where the more you get used to it, like the more you'll get the hang of it. Um, you can do this if we zoom out, model. We can turn the map off and then use just this guy. And once you select it, it's an image here, so we can fade it. It's kind of weird because you move this up and it gets lighter because that's how much it's fading. Um, but you can do that, like you can fade it pretty light. And then when you see it on the page, that helps it a lot. And there is, I think, a way to make that just print black and white if you don't want it distracting too much. But just doing that, you'll see that will print much cleaner. I think I already closed it. Oh yeah, and we can adjust the line type scale here, so rather than, we can go down to like 0.1. So, let's see now. Plot. So there you go. So that made it read a lot better although it still looks really dark so if that's what you want to use you can but I would still think about how you can get it to be so if we print the other sheet you'll see it's gonna read better because it's zoomed in so where's my cat we go here plot let's make this one too So see, this one is much closer, so you can actually perceive all the detail that we added. It doesn't look solid. I mean, would you be okay if we set the layer dimensions up so 
that deep the detail, the, the basically the granular level is mm -hmm. frozen in the, in the viewport. You can on the higher. Mm -hmm. And you can make these annotative. So what that means is, as you zoom in, they get more detailed, and as you zoom out, they get basically like so that it avoids that issue of looking solid black. As you zoom out, it will make them a lot lighter. Basically, makes the scale way bigger as you zoom out. So it will be relative to the viewport rather than like a standard line. So. That's all you have to do. I don't know where they went. I think they disappeared. You guys have any questions on that? So those are the two sheets. It's like the cover sheet. And then I listed there all the stuff to include. Um, and you can do that by just writing right on there with like a text. You can just write like on the cover. Like what is... Oh, so th these are the two sheets, the cover sheet and then the site plan. And if you want to do it, um, let's see if there's anything else that's weird. No, I think that makes sense. Yeah, that's what I got. Any questions? It makes sense. It's mostly just tracing the map for now and setting up the two sheets. So as long as you can get the map in there and set up your paper space, you'll be fine. Because that's like the two main things. And don't worry if you hate paper space because it'll go away in a couple weeks once we move into Revit.